Hey there everybody, Phil here for AndroidCentral.com and we are here with the Samsung Droid Charge on Verizon. Uh, we've seen this phone a couple times now, right? It was first uh, announced at CES in early January and so we've got it in our hands. We've had it for about a week or so now and have really enjoyed using it. Still don't know when it's coming out at the time that uh, we're recording this. So Verizon's had issues with their uh, LTE network and I know everybody's waiting for it. And for very good reason. We really, really like this phone. So let's uh, walk you through it. You have a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED Plus uh, display. And Super AMOLED Plus, you've used AMOLED uh, displays before, or you've used Super AMOLED displays before. The plus means you have uh, more sub-pixels kind of crammed in here. So the resolution is the same. It's still 480 by 800. But each individual pixel has more sub-pixels. And it looks pretty darn good. Uh, will you notice, you know, probably not, but just by itself, the screen is really, really nice. We're totally, totally digging it. Uh, up top here, you have a 1.3 megapixel uh, front-facing camera and your little diamond-shaped earpiece, like that. Down here in the bottom, we have physical buttons. That's kind of new for Samsung. We've seen just a whole lot of capacitive buttons. But these are physical, so you push them, you get a little clicky feel. I like that. I like having physical buttons. Now, they do look a little out of place. The rest of this phone is very, very sleek, very glossy. Uh, you see the, the back here is shiny. And then you have these buttons that have a matte finish. So they look a tiny, tiny bit out of place, but we can get over that. That's just kind of a cosmetic thing. I like having physical buttons, and these are nice and large, so you'll have no problem uh, pressing them. Uh, let's see, let's look at the bezels here. So on the right hand side you have HDMI out. It's the tiny, tiny little one, so it's not a full size HDMI plug, and that's fine. Uh, it's got a little door on it, that's easy to get into. You have your power button on the side there, that's Sammy's deal, that's where they put things. Left hand bezel you have your volume rocker, up down, and your micro USB port. No uh, cover on that now, like on the Galaxy S devices, which is unfortunate. I kind of like that. Even though I left it open all the time, at least he had the choice. You got a little hole up here for a little lanyard or charm or whatever. Uh, the top bezel, you have 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a noise canceling mic. Nothing really down here on the bottom. You have your, uh, your primary microphone and then the little slot to pry open the battery door. So on the back, you have an eight megapixel camera. Very, very nice. Very, very good camera. Uh, be sure to check out the sample photos in the uh, review. And it has a flash. The flash is okay. You know, I honestly, I'm fine without a flash on a smartphone just because they're pretty much that bad. So pry open the battery cover here. And we have a 1600 milliamp hour battery. That's good. We need a big battery because as you see the SIM card up here, it's a 4G device. As we know from the HTC Thunderbolt, 4G data just kills battery life. I mean, it can really, really churn through it. Uh, we've been okay on this, not quite seeing the drain, but at the same time, Verizon's network's been iffy, which is why the phone hasn't launched yet. So we're gonna let that sit and come back to uh, actual battery life tests later. So here you have the SIM card up here. Uh, you will be able to pop it out without taking the battery out, but that's not really a big thing, right? Uh, micro SD card is up here. It is spring loaded. I've already shot it out across the room once, so be careful with that. But again, you don't have to take the battery out to swap out SD cards, so that's nice. And they were very, very nice and are including a 32 gigabyte micro SD card here. That is pretty awesome. Let's pop that back on. So, uh, I mean, this is your basic TouchWiz, right? We've been using this for a while now on the Galaxy S devices. And you pretty much have the same thing here on the Droid Charge. It's very colorful. The icons are all very colorful. I know people say it looks very iPhone-ish. That's never bothered me. I didn't worry about that too much. Um, so the whole thing about TouchWiz is it's supposed to be smart, right? And give you kind of everything at a glance. So this is what is on the home screens by default. Feeds and updates. You can put Facebook and Twitter and everything in there and see it all in one nice spot. Uh, you got a bunch of widgets, so weather, Financial stuff, news, scheduling, a uh, nice clock here with weather bug is already preloaded. That's nice to see. Uh, so you get weather info, time info, it's sunny out. You got the Google uh, search widget and a whole bunch more icons. Buddies now, so you can add buddies. It's kind of like shortcuts to uh, your friends and stuff. One thing I do want to point out, Verizon and Samsung have these guided tours on here, and it's a whole bunch of videos about how to use this phone. So if you're new to Android, I definitely recommend that you uh, watch some of these and walk through them. 
We'll uh, just pop up one here so you can see it. Just to name a few. Once complete, press the home button. To save battery life, you should always pay attention to what applications are running in your background. To do this, simply press and hold the home button. Then, touch Task Manager. Simply touch Exit next to the application you want to stop, or touch Exit to stop all applications running in your background. Wise words, huh? So, like you just saw, you can hold down uh, the home button to bring up the Task Manager and your recently opened apps. So, that's cool. Uh, holding down the menu button doesn't do anything. Let's see, holding down back, no. Holding down search. Brings up voice actions, so cool. Uh, use my location. Do you want to allow Google to use location and improve search results and other services? Sure. So again, that's something you need to know with these phones. I know it's been in the news a lot lately. Location by default is not turned on the very first time you boot up this device. As you go through setup, it's gonna ask you if you want to use location services. You can always turn them off later. So right now I've got them all on. You can turn off Verizon location services. You can turn off GPS. You can turn off Google location. So if you're worried about that sort of thing, there you go. Uh, while you're in the settings, let's take a look and see exactly what we're using. Android 2.2.1. It's not gingerbread yet. That's unfortunate. I would completely expect this phone to get gingerbread at some point in the, I, you know, I'd like to say near future. But we are talking Samsung and Verizon, so we'll see how quickly it gets pushed out. Uh, but for the most part, it's not going to bother you that much, right? Uh, keyboards on this phone. Let's talk keyboards. So we'll bring up a place where we can type. We have three keyboards uh, preloaded. So you have Samsung's keyboard, you have a TalkBack keyboard, and you have Swipe. Let's see the TalkBack keyboard. No, I don't want to see the tutorial. So that's kind of normal looking keyboard. You have the Samsung keyboard, which is decent actually, it's not bad. And then you have one of our favorites, of course, Swipe. And if you haven't seen Swipe before, it's a great little thing where you just Drag your finger across and swipe it across and spell words. Very, very cool. Oh, uh, what else do you want to see? So you've got a whole bunch of apps on here by default. I've got a few that I've loaded too, but Samsung and uh, Verizon have loaded this thing up. So a lot of the apps you see here are Samsung's. Um, All Share, that's a Samsung thing. The browser is the Android browser, but it's really good. I don't know why people keep putting City ID on phones. Nobody uses it. Take it off. Daily Briefing, that is uh, Samsung's cool little app that brings all your stuff into one place. So weather, finance, news, just like before, only it's a full app as well. It's really, really nice. I like it a lot. Um, what else? Let's see. Google Search, Guided Tours, I am Let's Golf, that's a stub app. I know we've said this before, you know, Verizon keeps putting apps on here and stub apps, and there's Vcast Navigator, VZ Navigator all sorts of vcast media i could do without them they're there you can't kill them off but the good news is you should have enough room on the phone to put just all the apps you'll ever need and not really worry about it so there you go guys very quick look at the new droid charge from samsung and verizon see you later